G'day, I'm Andrew Harrison. This is going to be the second part of a three or four part series in setting up some advanced rigging systems. So in the previous episode we looked at uh, the rigging equipment, the hardware and textiles, so basically the slings, the pulleys and the blocks. Didn't look at the ropes, there's so much information about ropes elsewhere uh, and we cover that in other uh, disciplines when we do introduction to climbing and climbing equipment we look at rope in quite a bit of detail. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to set up a mechanical advantage system for tensioning a rope. With a mechanical advantage system you increase the power that a person can pull. You can imagine if you just pull on a rope then you can only pull up to your own strength or weight against that rope. If you can add a pulley into the system, you can create a two to one pulley system and that gives you twice as much power. You can go three to one, four to one, five to one and with enough equipment you can go beyond that. Usually four to one is about, is about the maximum that we set up in a rope tensioning system in tree work, although it is possible to do more than that. The useful scenarios for a mechanical advantage system for pulling over trees, so a small tree that can set up an anchor on the ground end of your pulling rope, you can set up a three to one pulley system with just a couple of pulleys and that gives you extra security pulling over that tree. Other scenarios when you are tensioning a speed line and that's really the application that we'll be looking at today you can tension that speed line so that the pulley that's running down the line flows nice and smoothly so it's not going into a big dip in a um, slack rope and the advantage of having that pulley system in the speed line means that you can slacken it off and lower the piece once it's come to the spot where you need it. So we'll, we'll get into that soon, we'll set up at our ground anchor, just we'll get a little plum tree there. It's good for a demonstration, it's probably on the small side if you were actually wanting to have a good base anchor. Uh, it's probably a five year old tree, so you'd really want to be using a decent anchor point. Uh, in the next video we'll look at rigging systems up in the tree, so how to set up a block in relation to setting up a speed line. The next one after that, so the fourth one really, will be how to set up different cradling systems and the actual lowering and sliding of uh, branches and timber down the uh, slide line or the speed line. We're primarily going to focus on controlled speed lining or slide lining, uh, not free lining. There's again, there's lots of information about free lining and a lot of systems that you'll see on YouTube that are called speed lining. I guess they are speed lining because they're just a, a branch sliding down a rope with, our, with, with very little control. And that's fine in certain situations. If you've got a lot of hazards, uh, particularly high value hazards like a house or um, well, let's just say a house that's, that's pretty high value, then you want to minimise the chance of damage to any structure like that. If you've just got a lawn or a bit of a garden, then you know it's not so critical. Anyway, we'll get on with the show. We'll set up a speed line on that plum tree and uh, we can go from there. First thing I'm going to do is set up a nice webbing sling on our little plum tree here because we don't want to affect the cambium or the damaged bark on the tree in any way. Uh, just have to centre it up so that um, the load is equally balanced on both legs of the sling. Need to sort out your equipment, make sure you've got everything you need, have it in a um, suitable spot. Uh, that's the rigging plate which I'm not going to need, I'm just primarily in this little video setting up the 
pulley systems. So I need three pulleys to set up a four to one pulley system. Also need three carabiners to link those pulleys. Make sure that you've got good, robust steel carabiners for this application. The first pulley goes on the sling. And in this configuration, because I've got the double-ended pulley, this one here, I can actually uh, have the other two pulleys that are the floating pulleys in a tandem configuration. You can set them up side by side. Here I am setting up a running bowline which terminates one end of the pulling rope to that little plum tree and I'm going to set it all up in this one spot here so it's easy to see how it works. In this application I've got a dedicated rope for the mechanical advantage system so this rope is going through the pulleys and is not actually attached to the tree or the top of the speed line tree so we're going to have another rope which is going to be the rope that the trolley or the pulley for the speed line runs down and this rope here is purely just for the tensioning system This works quite well in a 4 to 1 system because you need quite a lot of rope if you've got a reasonable amount of slack set up. Okay, so this is the other end, so this is the um, top end of the speed line and as you can see a different rope. Um, just tying it off with a clove hitch and a couple of half hitch to, to just back it up. So we'll look at more applications of that and uh, other ways to set up that up in the next video. So tying a end knot here, so I'll tie a double bowline because that's nice and strong and then attach the carabiner with those pulleys in tandem straight onto there. Then it's just a matter of pulling the tension on the rope here, take all the slack out of it and pull hard and uh, you can pull four times your strength so you can see there there's four different legs of rope in the pulley configuration and that gives you the four to one so at the end of this video we'll have a look at um, some other setups so a two to one and a three to one which are the other common systems so if you've got less gear you can uh, set up those or if it's a, a smaller tree that you're pulling over you don't need quite so much so just going over this again and you can see how much rope it pulls through so obviously it pulls four times the amount of rope where my hands are than the pull at the termination end at the top end. One way of really improving the usefulness of the system is adding a prusik, uh, which is a, a way of capturing the uh, tension that you put into the system and then you can let go of the rope. So you can actually pull it up tight have the prusik hold the tension on there and uh, voila the rope stays tensioned uh, so much easier and uh, you don't have to constantly pull to um, to hold that 
rope taut. You can use different types of friction hitch here. I've just used a plastic loop. Uh, sorry that it's the same color as the rope that I'm using. So you could use a French Prusik and that actually gives you a little less sit back as well. But this one works fine and if, ever, if you've got a Prusik sitting around that you're not going to climb on because you wouldn't want to obviously use a climbing Prusik in this system. As you can see if you just uh, pull back on the Prusik like you would a climbing system then it releases the tension out of the system. So this system, I'm kind of working backwards here, we'll have a look at a 3 to 1 system. So in this one you've got the rope terminated to the tree, a pulley also terminated to the tree and one pulley at the top end of the system. So 3 to 1 system, that top rope there is just tied back just to hold it into position so you can see it clearly. Uh, tied that back with a bowline on a bite. Bowline on a bite is a bit more secure, stronger and more easily untied than an alpine butterfly. So I kind of tend not to use alpine butterflies for that configuration because it binds up. This one's just a two to one system so tied off to the tree, back up to one pulley onto the pulling line, you pull back on that other leg, double the pulling power but you can just set up. That concludes this video. Hope you've got something out of it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and look forward to the next one.